Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of human beings throughout the world. In the United States, a person dies of cardiovascular disease every 37 seconds. And my question is, why aren't people going, why, are, why isn't this person being helped? <laughs> anyway, no, seriously, uh, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer now. So many people are walking around with uh, cardi cardiovascular risk factors, such as elevated blood lipids and so on. When you when these people go to a doctor, the first thing the doctor is going to do is probably put them on what they call a statin drug. Statin drugs are the one of the more popularly prescribed drugs in the world, uh, and they work by lowering cholesterol. There's a big debate in medicine uh, about just how important cholesterol is in relation to cardiovascular disease. There is a, uh, a relationship, which I'll get to in a minute. Suffice to say that uh, there's problems with statin drugs. Uh, among other things, statin drugs, uh, if you're working out really hard, very intensely, and you take statin drugs, your muscles will be broken down a little bit more than they normally would be. In other words, statin drugs promote increased breakdown of muscles for people that are working out, especially if we're working out intensely. Uh, also, another problem, uh, this could be related to a uh, nutrient called coenzyme Q10. Coenz coenzyme Q10 is produced in the liver uh, from amino acids like tyrosine, but unfortunately, uh, it, it not only does it decrease the production of uh, Q Q10, not only does it decrease with age, but it turns out that the uh, synthesis of Q10 involves the same pathway that the, that the liver uses to synthesize cholesterol. It's called the, the mevenolate pathway. So when you take a drug such as statins to reduce cholesterol, now I should add, just to make it clear, the way statin drugs work is they, is they inhibit an enzyme called HMGCA reductase, which, it, which basically the liver, that's what synthesizes cholesterol, cholesterol in the liver. Unfortunately, that same pathway that produces cholesterol in the liver also uh, produces coins MQ10. So if you take a statin drug, you will reduce cholesterol, total cholesterol, but you will also reduce the uh, production of coins MQ10. Uh, Q enzyme Q10 is a very important for mitochondrial function, especially in muscles. And the idea is that as you get lower and lower in coins MQ10 because of the statin drugs, it induces a greater degree of what they call myopathy or muscle damage when you work out. So this brings up the uh, idea of alternative treatments to elevate cholesterol levels that doesn't involve statin drugs. Uh, the very first thing that you want to do is, of course, go on a, a better diet. You want to, uh, above all, eliminate refined sugars and refined grains from your diet. Uh, but a lot of people, or particularly doctors, will tell you to be careful of saturated fat. Again, that's debatable. You don't want to eat a ton of saturated fat, but you also have to uh, look at your saturated fat intake in comparison to your carbohydrate intake. For example, if you're on a ketogenic diet, which practically eliminates carbohydrates, or if you've, even if you're on a low-carbohydrate diet, any saturated you fat you eat is going to be oxidized as energy. It's not going to be used as a substrate for cholesterol production in the liver. You should also know that the liver produces about a gram or a thousand milligrams of cholesterol a day through that HMG-CoA HMG, HMG reductase enzyme. Uh, so saturated fat is a substrate for cholesterol production in the liver. In other words, a starting substance. But even if you ate no, chole uh, no foods containing cholesterol, your body would still make a thousand milligrams of cholesterol because cholesterol is very important constituent of the body. Your cell membranes have a lot of cholesterol in it. They need it to support cell, main, cell membrane structure. Uh, cholesterol is the uh, raw material or precursor for all steroid hormones, including testosterone, estrogen, cortisol, aldosterone, and, and, uh, and, and others. Uh, the, the cholesterol is the raw material. Uh, so you do need you do need cholesterol is an essential uh, substance, but what you have to be careful of just to make it clear, what we have to be careful of is the type of cholesterol. In other words, uh, you 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 have you have different kinds of cholesterol. You have like low debt your, your liver. Let me let me make it clear. Your liver will start out with producing something called very low density lipoprotein. 
As it's traveled in the bloodstream, it's converted into low-density lipoprotein. Now, low-density lipo, low lipoprotein is often called the bad cholesterol because low-density lipoprotein is the main carry of cholesterol in the blood. And when it gets oxidized, very important point, when it gets oxidized, it tends to kind of stick into the artery linings. It, uh, it goes through a process involving macrophages, white blood cells, which turn into foam cells, which eventually lead to what they call fatty streaks inside the lining or the endothelium of blood vessels. This is the beginning of atherosclerosis. This is what eventually will cause heart attacks and strokes. But a key point is LDL is only dangerous when it's oxidized. LDL carries cholesterol, by the way, to your testes, where the cholesterol is converted to testosterone. So they found that people with higher testosterone levels, and I'm, talk, I'm not talking about people taking steroids or on testosterone therapy, people with naturally higher testosterone levels almost always have slightly higher LDL levels because that LDL is carrying cholesterol to the testes where the late where it's where the cholesterol is converted through several enzymatic steps in the Leydig cells of the testes into testosterone. Uh, as I said, the, uh, the then you have another type of cholesterol carrier called high-density lipoprotein, which is basically like a garbage truck. It takes the excess cholesterol out of the blood, carries it back to the liver, where the cholesterol is converted into bile and then excreted. That's the only way your body can get rid of cholesterol. You can't burn or oxidize cholesterol like you burn body fat. This transport of HDL cholesterol back to the liver is called reverse cholesterol transport. Uh, now, the thing about the uh, LDL, the thing you have to remember, as long as it's not oxidized, it's not dangerous. And there's different forms of LDL. Uh, it, they're called particle size. You have, you have the large, fluffy LDL, and you have the small, dense LDL. Now, the small, dense LDL is more prone to oxidation, making it more dangerous. How do you get the small, dense? If you eat a low-fat diet, Low-fat, high-carb diets tend to favor small, dense uh, LDL, the dangerous LDL. Strangely enough, low-carb, higher-fat diets favor the large, fluffy LDL, which is much less subject to oxidation, therefore much, sa much safer. If you ingest certain fat-soluble nutrients, they actually, are com uh, they actually combine with LDL in the blood, and they, uh, and they act as a protective shield to prevent the oxidation of LDL. Example of some of these nutrients, lycopene found in tomatoes, astaxanthin, which is found in, in uh, salmon, uh, and it's found in, uh, uh, what else is it found, found in? Uh, seafood actually uh, contains astaxanthin, and, and a couple of carotenoids, uh, and there's a couple of vitamins. They all kind of like combine, uh, coenzyme Q10 does too, by the way. It kind of locks on to LDL in the bloodstream, and it's carried with LDL in the bloodstream. But while they're locked on to LDL, it will prevent the LDL from oxidizing. And again, if LDL doesn't oxidize, there's no problem. Now, if you don't, uh, you know, if you eliminate uh, cholesterol uh, uh, foods, you know, as doctors say, uh, don't eat egg yolks because they contain cholesterol. Your body is still going to make those thousand milligrams of cholesterol. The gram of cholesterol, because again, it's it's absolutely essential for uh, uh, you know for, for health. Uh, other things that can affect cardiovascular risk include family history. You have a mother, father, uh, uncles, that type of thing that have had cardiovascular disease. You probably have increased risk. If you smoke, horrible. Smoking is one of the worst things you could do for cardiovascular health, and not to mention lung cancer. If you're sedentary, if you're sedentary, again, there's a, the, 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 there's a, your LDL cholesterol will tend to get more oxidized, greater chance of uh, atherosclerosis, heart disease. Heavy alcohol consumption also is, uh, uh, produces adverse effects on cardiovascular uh, health. From a dietary standpoint, let's say you don't want to take statins. You want to try the natural route first. What should you do? You want to focus on, on certain types of food. For example, monounsaturated fats, examples, they're found in nuts. Extra virgin olive oil is a very good source of monounsaturated fats. Uh, poly, uh, unsaturated fats have one double chemical bond, wh whereas the uh, monounsaturated fats have only one double bond. That's why they're called monounsaturated fats. Uh, the, uh, 
uh, th these type of fats have been shown to uh, have been shown to uh, uh, favorably affect HDL. They raise HDL levels, uh, and uh, diets that are, are high in monounsaturated fat, such as the Mediterranean diet that features small amounts of fish meat, focuses on fruits, vegetables, nuts, red wine, and extra virgin olive oil have been shown to reduce levels of, of LDL and increase levels of HDL, the good HDL. Uh, monounsaturated fats also reduce the oxidation of cholesterol. Uh, and again, that's, uh, that's dangerous. Uh, the the, the uh, monounsaturated fats can actually decrease the oxidized LDL cholesterol particles and increase HDL. So again, uh, if you want to have uh, monounsaturated fat sources include extra virgin of olive oil, nuts such as almonds, cashews, pecan, pecans, macadamias, uh, avocados is a very good source of monounsaturated fats, and our olives themselves. You also want to uh, include polyunsaturated fats. This is a little bit controversial because polyunsaturated fats are very prone to oxidation. Uh, if you use something like uh, a polyunsaturated fat source like omega-3, you have to put it in the refrigerator as soon as you open the bottle. They're very, very prone to oxidation. Uh, fat, fish oil supplements left out in room temperature can, go, can oxidize in just a couple of days. And uh, oxidized fats are very harmful to cardiovascular health. But poly polyunsaturated fats research over the last 30 years have shown that they reduce LDL cholesterol, which is exactly what statin drugs do, and thereby they decrease the risk of heart disease. There was a study that replaced saturated fats in 115 adults with polyunsaturated fats for two months. By the end of the study, total and LDL cholesterol levels were reduced by about 10%. Uh, polyunsaturated fats are also associated with a reduced risk of the metabolic syndrome which is a, uh, a, uh, a, a set of symptoms related to the onset of diabetes and cardiovascular disease, such as uh, increased waist size, elevated blood glucose, elevated blood triglycerides, and other things. Uh, also, polyunsaturated fats seem to help prevent or have a uh, preventive effect against type 2 diabetes. Uh, another study changed the diets of 4,220 adults, replacing 5% of their calories from carbohydrates with polyunsaturated fats, their blood glucose and fasting insulin levels decreased, along with the de decreasing risk for type 2 diabetes. So again, one of the outstanding examples, of probably the best form of polyunsaturated fat is omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, you, the other type of polyunsaturated fats, usually omega-6 fatty acids, which are found in vegetable oils, ubiquitous. Omega-6 is everywhere. Most people consume too much omega-6 in relation to omega-3, uh, however, the big problem with the omega-6 is that some people think that having too much omega-6 will increase inflammation in the body, and inflammation is, a, is an underlying cause of cardiovascular disease and many other diseases. However, the, the, and I'm going to write about this in an upcoming issue of my Applied Metabolics newsletter, the notion that linoleic acid, which is an omega-6 fatty acid, or omega-6 fatty acids in general, like arachidonic acid, always cause inflammation is fallacious. It's been over-exaggerated, it's not true. And I'll explain why and I'll talk about the nuances involved in my, only in my applied metabolics. It's extremely complex, but I'll explain it. The type of fat you want to avoid if you want to control your cholesterol is trans fats. Trans fats have uh, been modified by a process called hydro hydro hydrogenation, where they add a uh, oxygen atom, uh, that bas basically, what they do is they, it tends to make uh, unsaturated fats more stable. Uh, and they, in other words, they don't go bad. Uh, the, uh, trans fats were developed at the turn of the 20th century to prevent the premature degradation of liquid fats. Uh, with trans fats, you could keep them on a the shelf forever. Unfortunately, trans fats raise LDL, they lower HDL, uh, and they also, uh, they, they interfere with amino acid uh, metabolism, so they can have catabolic effects in muscle. Uh, and they also are extremely dangerous for uh, cardiovascular health. The most common, uh, fo the foods that are most commonly rich in trans fats include margarine and shortening. Margarine is garbage. You should never eat it. Butter is a lot healthier than margarine. Don't eat margarine. It's, lo it's just pure trans fat. Pastries and baked goods tend to have trans fats microwavable popcorn, 
fried fast foods, some types of pizza, non-dairy coffee creamer. You can tell if a food contains uh, trans fats because on the label, it'll say something like partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. The word hydrogenated, that's trans fats. Uh, there's the uh, peanut butter. Uh, uh, peanut butter, supposedly you see a lot of brands of peanut butter where it says zero trans fats. But if you look on the label, you'll see that it says partially hydrogenated whatever oil is added to it, which is trans fats. So how could they say zero trans fats on the label? Well, the way the government allows it, if, if, uh, if one serving of peanut butter contains less than five grams of trans fats, they could put on the label zero trans fats, but that's basically false advertising. Because if you eat more than, uh, let's say, a tablespoon of peanut butter, now you're getting a lot of trans fats, which is extremely dangerous to health, very bad for you. So you will want to avoid uh, you will want to avoid trans fats at all costs. Read the labels. Don't buy anything, any food that contains partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. A really good way to control cholesterol is to eat soluble fiber. There's two kinds of fiber: insoluble and soluble. Soluble is found in stuff like fruits, vegetables, and uh, what else? Uh, oatmeal. Soluble fiber actually will lock on to cholesterol in the body, in the intestines, and pull it right out of the body. So, so it can it can actually directly lower uh, cholesterol levels. Also, the uh, soluble fiber act as food. For the uh, for the population of, of organisms such as bacteria, fungi, and others that reside in the large intestine, it's called the intestinal microbiome. If you keep the intestinal microbiome healthy, it will actually help you control your cholesterol levels. It will actually help control by producing three short chain fatty acids. They're called butyrate, propionic acid, and acetate. They, they travel to the liver and they inhibit. The production of cholesterol they can actually you can actually lower your cholesterol by eat by eating soluble fiber through two again two pathways through a direct uh, soluble fiber of locking onto the cholesterol pulling out of the body secondarily by feeding the intestinal microbiome and causing a, uh, a release of short chain fatty acids which will help to lower cholesterol levels uh, uh, again good sources of soluble fiber oatmeal, beans and lentils, Brussels sprouts, fruits, peas, flax seeds. Sodium seed, uh, if you don't like to eat a lot of uh, those foods, you can take fiber supplements. A good one is psyllium seed. Uh, hydrolyzed guar gum is very good for the intestinal microbiome. If you take these uh, fiber supplement powders, make sure you take it with a large amount of fluid because these things kind of can gel up and you don't want it to gel up in your throat or anything like that. You know, so you want to always, and also fiber works best when it's combined with fluid. So if you're going to mix fiber powders, make sure you take it with a good amount of water. That'll 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 make it work. Another way, of course, to lower uh, cholesterol and blood lipids: exercise. Exercise reduces har uh, harmful LDL, and it also produces natural antioxidants, increases them in, like superoxide dismutase, which will which will prevent LDL from becoming oxidized. And, and, and the greatest benefit of exercise is it increases the protective high-density lipoprotein, or HDL. The American Heart Association advises that 150 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise is enough to lower cholesterol levels. In one study, 12 weeks of combined aerobic and resistance exercise reduced harmful oxidized LDL in 20 overweight women. They exercised three days a week with 15 minutes each of aerobic activity, including walking and jumping jacks, resistance band training, and low-intensity Korean dance, whatever that is. Uh, even low-intensity exercise like walking will increase HDL, and, uh, and you'll get the benefit. Uh, aerobic exercise should raise your heart rate to at least 75% of maximum. Resistance training should uh, involve weights at least 50% of maximum one rep, which is moderate. Uh, any, any activity that raises the heart rate to 85% of the maximum also increases HDL and decreases LDL. The longer the duration, the greater the effects. Resi resistance exercise such as weight training can decrease LDL even at moderate intensity. At maximum effort, it also increases HDL. So exercise is extremely important. Also, uh, an e another way uh, to uh, lower your cholesterol without taking any drugs is just to go on a diet and lose weight. Every 10 pounds of excess fat reduces roughly 10 milligrams of cholesterol a day. 
By losing weight, you will automatically lower your cholesterol. Research shows that people who lost between 5 to 10% of their weight significantly reduced their total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol levels, as well as triglycerides or blood fat. Those who lost more than 10% of the weight reduced cholesterol and triglyceride levels significantly more. One study that involved weight loss for women found that a diet high in healthy oils lowered both good and bad cholesterol. Uh, so, you, another thing you want to do is, again, avoid smoking. Smoking is absolutely horrible for health. Horrible. Smoking will kill you. If it doesn't kill you through causing cancer, it'll kill you through causing cardiovascular disease. But you will die one way or the other. The immune cells in smokers are unable to return cholesterol from the vessel walls to the blood to the transport the liver. In other words, smoking actually cripples the H reverse transport cholesterol system of HDL. It, it actually prevents your body from getting rid of cholesterol. The damage, this damage is caused by the tobacco tar rather than the nicotine that's in these cigarettes. Uh, and uh, you also, you can have some, uh, some people say drinking a little bit of alcohol will help. Uh, it's true, drinking, let's say, two glasses of wine a day will raise a certain type of LDL. There's different types of L LDL. And drinking two glasses of wine, one beer, will actually raise a certain type of of, uh, of HDL. And, and that way, it could be slightly uh, cardiovascular protective. However, the type of LDL that's raised by exercise is like five times more potent at, redu at uh, uh, getting rid of cholesterol than the LDL raised by alcohol. Uh, I, I still think that alcohol should be avoided. Women with any genetic tendency towards uh, breast cancer should never drink alcohol because it's a risk factor for breast, even in small amounts, it's a risk factor for breast cancer. Another thing you could do, uh, a, a way of uh, uh, dealing with uh, cholesterol levels without taking drugs, are plant sterols. These are plant sterols are basically, the best way to describe them is plant cholesterol. See, plants don't produce cholesterol. Only animal foods have cholesterol. But what plants do produce is sterols. One of them is called beta uh, cetosterol. You might have heard of, uh, uh, what is that thing they use to treat? Uh, oh, uh, okay. Uh, soy palmetto. Soy palmetto is often used to treat a benign uh, uh, prostate enlargement. And the key factor in soy palmetto is a plant sterol called beta cetosterol. Anyway, what happens is when you consume plant sterols, they compete with food cholesterol for, for uh, uh, incorporation into cholesterol transport proteins. So if, the, if, the, if you eat, uh, let's say you take a plant sterol and you're eating foods containing cholesterol, the plant sterols will block the uptake of cholesterol into your body. By doing so, they could lower the, uh, they could lower the cholesterol. But, uh, any, but it really is kind of a moot point because your body only absorbs about 5% of the cholesterol from food anyway. Uh, a research review reported that clinical studies show that taking between 1.5 to 3 grams of plant sterols can reduce LDL cholesterol concentration by 7.5 to 12%. Researchers said taking with a main meal twice per day allows for optimal cholesterol lowering comparable to using statin drugs but without any of the side effects. There's a couple other supplements that you could look at to help lower cholesterol naturally. Fish oil, again, high in omega-3 fatty acids. One study found that supplementing diets of older adults who had high blood pressure and high cholesterol with fish oil-based uh, omega-3 reduced high blood pressure in both total cholesterol and LDL levels. Uh, some studies show that, uh, uh, you might have heard some studies show that, that fish oil has no effect on uh, preventing cardiovascular disease. But no studies, the amount of, of fish oil provided was way too low to have any benefits. Usually provided about a gram a day of fish oil, but the benefits begin at four grams a day in regard to cardiovascular protection. So those, uh, those studies are basically don't prove anything. Uh, uh, so like I said earlier, psyllium is a very good form of soluble fiber and it's particularly good at lowering cholesterol. A research review of 28 studies found that psyllium fiber effectively lowers LDL cholesterol uh, and uh, uh, the, even the FDA agrees they suggest taking 7 grams of soluble fiber a day, uh, uh, which, uh, which involves ingesting 10.2 grams of psyllium husk, reduces the risk of coronary heart artery disease. Uh, coenzyme Q10 
again, you know, coenzyme MQ10 uh, will help prevent the oxidation of LDL, and and we take statin drugs. It, uh, as I said, it lowers coenzyme MQ10. Uh, several studies that involved uh, 409 uh, subjects found that coenzyme MQ10 reduced total cholesterol. However, in those studies, LDL and HDL did not change. So uh, coenzyme MQ10 is pretty good. So I think. Uh, uh, there's other there's other possibilities. Uh, garlic, garlic will lower uh, LDL pretty effectively. Aged garlic, I think it lowers it about 10%. Uh, there's, there was a sub uh, there's a uh, supplement called polic polic policanol I think it's called policanol. I'm probably mispronouncing it. It's made from sugar cane. That was uh, originally thought to be in a really effective cholesterol lower. However, uh, it, uh, subsequent studies show that it, it wasn't effective. It doesn't really work. Uh, the, the, uh, the methods I outlined in this video are probably the most effective ways to lower your uh, total cholesterol without using drugs. So that's about it. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, uh, anti-aging research you can use today, fat loss techniques that really work, hormonal therapy, women's health and fitness and many other topics subscribe today to my applied metabolics newsletter www.appliedmetabolics.com it's it's 40 to 50 pages every month no ads pure evidence-based information including my nearly 60 years of study uh, of uh, of study and, and, and empirical uh, experience i've been in the trenches i i've worked out all this time i know what works and what doesn't work this type of information can't be provided by anyone else, no matter how many degrees they have. This type of practical experience, I, I have it, but these, some of these other people don't have it. I've been a writer for over 40 years. I know how to write for the public. I know how to write where it's understandable. I translate all technical terms. Anyone with a sixth grade education will be able to understand clearly applied metabolics, and you will learn a lot. This publication, I'm not exaggerating, could save your life could get could allow you to gain a ton of muscle help you lose fat really improve your life i'm telling you if i i wish i had something like applied metabolics when i was a competitive bodybuilder it would have saved me a lot of time and headaches so subscribe today at www.appliedmetabolics.com when you subscribe i'll send you an invitation to join my private applied metabolics facebook page where each day i post new information on on medicine exercise science and nutrition I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only could send me short questions, maybe something they read in Applied Metabolics that they want more information on, or anything that comes to mind as long as they're short questions. That's only for current subscribers. That's like an added benefit I throw in because of their subscription. I appreciate the subscription. Uh, you're welcome to leave comments under these videos. Uh, the likelihood of me answering them is very low. I just don't have the time. Uh, but I, uh, I will answer questions submitted by current subscribers at my website through AppliedMetabolics.com, but very unlikely through the videos. Uh, um, you know, this is my gift, but this information in the video, I, I'm not going to answer endless questions under the video. Well, if other people want to do that, more power to them. I don't have the time. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Take care. Thank you for listening.